John Donne's poem The Canonization is a prime example of metaphysical poetry, utilizing inventive conceits and wit to explore themes of love and spirituality. The poem begins abruptly, with the speaker addressing someone who seems critical of his love. He urges the addressee to focus on improving their own situation, highlighting society's misplaced values and criticizing the speaker for his love. In the second stanza, the poet parodies Petrarchan notions of love, contrasting them with the harsh realities of the world. The speaker's torments of love, like sighs, tears, and passion, harm no one else. This innocence is juxtaposed against the suffering in the world wars, misery, and exploitation. The speaker's lover becomes an active participant, adding depth to the narrative. The third stanza employs metaphors to portray the saintly nature of the lovers. They disregard society's censure, united by their transformative love. They are likened to moths drawn to a flame, willing to sacrifice themselves. The comparison to a candle and symbols of strength and gentleness emphasize their union. The phoenix symbolizes their rebirth through passion, their love transcending sexuality. The poem shifts to a serious tone in the fourth stanza, as the speaker declares their readiness to die for love. Even if their legend is not celebrated in tombs, their story will live on in sonnets. The lovers aim not for chronicles but for poetic tribute, symbolized by runes or stanzas. In the final stanza, their love is elevated further. They become each other's refuge, uniting the world within their gaze. They become mirrors reflecting the world's essence, inviting admiration from other lovers who seek to emulate their devotion. The canonization employs vivid symbolism to explore the depth and sacredness of the lover's bond, challenging societal norms and celebrating the transformative power of love. It is a complex work that uses rich symbolism to explore themes of love, spirituality, and the intersection of the worldly and divine. Through its intricate use of symbolism, the poem delves into the nature of love, its transformative power, and its ability to elevate ordinary experiences to the realm of the sacred. One of the primary symbols in the canonization is that of alchemy. Alchemy was a medieval practice that aimed to transform base metals into precious ones, as well as achieve spiritual enlightenment. In the poem, the speaker and his lover are described as for God's sake, hold your tongue, and let me love, which can be seen as an alchemical transformation of their physical love into a spiritual connection. This transformation is also echoed in the image of birds of prey that will fare like that chicken, referring to a chick breaking out of an egg. This suggests that their love, like a chick hatching from an egg, is a process of transformation and rebirth, moving from the mundane to the divine. The concept of martyrdom is another prominent symbol in the poem. The speaker declares that for God's sake, hold your tongue and let me love, which can be interpreted as a plea to allow their love to exist even in the face of societal judgment or persecution. The speaker likens their love to the suffering of martyrs, stating that love's mysteries in souls do grow, but yet the body is his book. Here, the body becomes a book in which the mysteries of love are written, and their love story takes on a divine significance akin to the stories of saints. The use of paradox throughout the poem is also symbolic. 
The title The Canonization itself is a paradox, as canonization typically refers to the process of being recognized as a saint. While the lover's relationship is anything but conventional or saintly, the speaker acknowledges their unconventional love, asking, and call it both, how to be a twin. This paradox reflects the complexity of their relationship and the tension between the earthly and divine aspects of their love. The imagery of exploration and discovery is also present in the poem, symbolizing the lover's journey of self-discovery and their exploration of the depths of their emotions. The speaker refers to let us possess one world, each eacheth one, and is one, suggesting that their love allows them to possess and explore an entire world within their relationship. This idea is further emphasized by the reference to the new world, which alludes to the age of exploration and the discovery of new territories. In the context of the poem, this symbolizes the